Good morning, good afternoon, good day. Today is Wednesday, April the 13th, 2022. And yes, you got it right. It's Wisdom Wednesday podcast with Dr. Mary Seegers, your host. And I am so honored and uh, delighted, delighted that we have a special guest who's going to talk about a very serious discussion today. As many of you may know that April has been designated as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, things that we need to talk about, but so often we don't talk about. So I'm just honored and pleased to invite our guest, Crystal Sanford Brown. I want to officially welcome you. How are you this morning, Crystal? I'm doing well. Each day that I wake up and I can restart from the day before, I'm grateful. Grateful, grateful. Amen. I can attest to that. Let me share with the audience just a little bit more about this phenomenal woman, Crystal Sanford Brown. She's a mother of three adults and four grandchildren, an early childhood educator and advocate from Bloomfield Township, Michigan. She is the founder of the nonprofit Emerging Young Leadership, Inc., the organization is dedicated to working with young people who have experienced or adverse childhood experience, also known as ACE, by preventing, by providing a safe space for sharing their stories. She continues to be the only person of color to have served as the elected president of the Michigan Association for the Education of Young Children. In 95 years, she was also elected in the role of vice president for the NAEYC, is a certified state trainer in many areas related to child well-being, including child abuse and neglect and human trafficking. She is a trainer on ways to protect children from sexual abuse. An issue, she says, has resulted in devastating lifestyles impacted by drug abuse, human trafficking, self-hatred, and suicide. For over 20 years, she has been an outspoken advocate for diversity, equality, inclusion, and belonging. Sanford Brown recounts being introduced to advocacy as a small child when she accompanied her mother and sister to hear the Reverend Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. in June of 1963 during his visit to Detroit before his iconic I Have a Dream speech in August of 1963 in Washington, D.C. So you got some history there, my sister. (laughs) And Crystal has become widely known for her large selection of prescription eyeglasses to which she states, I want to forever have a clear view on all issues relating to children to protect their safety. And I honor you today. I love those glasses as well. (laughs) So let's just, it's a serious uh, subject matter. When I realized that April is dedicated to being um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, I said, we need to talk about this subject. And so I did a little research. I can show that I'm, you know, I'm up on it, but I know you're more uh, on it than I am. But can you just share with the audience what is sexual assault and how is April now the awareness month? Yes. Um, so April actually is the awareness month for so many different advocacy issues. And um, prior to, I want to say it's been less than 20 years where we've been really, and when I say we, the world mm-hmm. has been really open and to the advocacy of addressing an issue that many still consider taboo and non-approachable or we don't talk about that well this person right here as of i want to say about five years ago six six years ago um was my first time addressing it openly i was the keynote address for an early childhood brunch and a um um it was a brunch for appreciation during the month of april because april is um the month of appreciation for early childhood educators it is month of the young child 
week of the young child, all of these things. But yet we mm-hmm. weren't talking about some of the major issues that are behind the developmental and also behavior concerns of young children, which if there isn't in any type of intervention, it goes into adulthood. So uh, April is proclaimed um, through the uh, president's office as um, sexual abuse month. So we continue to highlight it in the state of Michigan. Michigan has um, a part of the government, one of the uh, organizations that's out of the governor's office is the Children's Trust Fund. And I am on the program committee for the Children's Trust Fund. And that um, committee handles for all 83 counties in the state of Michigan, awareness for child abuse and neglect. And so we do a lot of programming. Um, There is going to be a huge event on a very wonderful day, May 17th, which is my birthday. Oh. (laughs) Where we will host the annual event and there will be a silent auction. There will be... um, bidding on you know various things and so this is one of the major events that's held through the um, children's trust fund that provides uh, funding for the training and also for support for individuals as you stated earlier who have been impacted by aces adverse childhood experiences and environments and i am one of those individuals yes you know, I listen to you, Crystal, and you're so confident because you know the importance of trying to, advocate, you know, to eradicate that. Because if they don't take care of it when they're children and they think, well, this is normal, sex trafficking could be the next thing or prostitution or drugs. Have you seen that play out in, in our society um, because of not addressing the issue that something that happened to you and it wasn't your fault? You know, so many times... Uh, uh, they think this is normal, uh, and it's not normal. Absolutely. And I was doing, uh-huh. no, absolutely. Um, I, and not that I want to harp on a continual topic that's been addressed over the last week and a half, but we, mm-hmm. we if you watch the Oscars, you saw, you saw a live action of what ACEs can do to you. If you have not read Will Smith's book, in the book he addresses how he always felt like a coward as a child when he viewed his mother being Mm -hmm. abused by the father and he wanted to protect his mother, but he always felt like he just couldn't protect his mother wanting to be respectful too to the father. And so Mm -hmm. at one point when his father became sickly and he was in a wheelchair, he, mm-hmm. You know, in his mind, he's like, okay, I can now get him back. I could push him down the stairs. He did not do that. But right, if you right. the see Oscars, you. that mm-hmm. PS, P, a PTSD, post-traumatic mm-hmm. stress disorder, kicked mm-hmm. in. He did not have the wherewithal at that moment to pull mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. He was thinking, okay, I can't be a coward again. I got to protect. I got to protect. And he reacted wow. instead of being mm-hmm. proactive with his feelings. And you right. saw the reaction of him go up mm-hmm. and slap Chris Tucker. I'm sorry, Chris. Right. Um, Chris Rock. Wait. Rock. And yeah. so, <laughs> we will, yes, I don't want to get mixed up. But we will mm-hmm. see incidents wow. like that occur. And individuals wow. will immediately start, you know, making comments, Mm -hmm. if you aren't aware of looking at it in a cycle or um, a mental aspect and Mm -hmm. and seeing how it can be related and correlation in there, you will, you will, you will miss that. So Mm -hmm. immediately I knew what he was doing. Was it right? No, but he was reacting as a child who you mm-hmm. saw a nine-year-old go up there at an mm-hmm. adult body and slap mm-hmm. him because 
he felt like he had to protect not only pro- going back to that protecting my mother but protecting mm-hmm. his wife and it's right. it's not our business whatever their marriage right. is right. that's their right. that's their agreement whatever it is mm-hmm. but he saw in that instant that he wow. felt he had to protect her mm-hmm. I'm glad you gave that backdrop. You read the story and I've heard him talk on different, you know, about how his father abused his mother and he just felt like a coward. So, you know, those kind of insights can give you some understanding why people do what they do, you know, so that that's phenomenal. Yeah. Let me ask you this, you know, I was doing some research, um, Crystal, and they were saying that the victim oftentimes know their the person who perpetrated on them or who abused them, you know, is it a family member? Is it a neighbor? Is it someone they trusted? And and it's usually somewhere close to their home. You know, it's not far away and they, you know, it's like a foreign, I mean, a tat. Uh, but is that, have you found that to be true with your research and your uh, uh, information? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, I am also a trained facilitator for darkness mm-hmm. to light. And mm-hmm. that is an organization that provides training for uh, child abuse awareness. And so mm-hmm. in our training, we utilize the, t- the statistics that one in 10 children will be mm-hmm. sexually abused. And uh, you previously asked, asked me to define sexual abuse. Sexual yeah. abuse can mm-hmm. be fondling. It can be inappropriate touching. It could be... Um, having a person uh, engaging in watching pornography, any of that. Um, yes. So it can also include, the, the molestation can also mm-hmm. include where there's mm-hmm. penetration. So there's mm-hmm. just a fine line between the two, but right. it's still, you know, when individuals speak of it and they share it, we make sure that we do not diminish uh, someone's mm-hmm. story because their story has validity. And when you start questioning someone and you make the the person feel more victimized and trying to diminish what their you know their story, you 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 are re um, victimizing that person and making them feel as if you know they're lying. So um, get back to your statistic: one in ten children will be molested before their 18th birthday. Wow. Wow. And then the the it goes down by so that's children, both boys mm-hmm. and girls. And you know, I, I'm in the era now where we we don't use the gender specific, we say children and you know, mm-hmm. but understandably ninety over ninety percent of the one in ten know their perpetrator. And wow. as you stated, most often it's a family friend, it's a relative, it's someone mm-hmm. that could be a part of um, a leadership. It could be mm-hmm. someone in a church group, or organization, boys and girls club, boys and girls yeah. scout, any of those. So mm-hmm. we must, mm-hmm. if I always say, if you see something, you say something. And yes. if you think about, mm-hmm. you know, many of us who travel quite a bit, if you think about, you know, some of the major airports like Hartsfield in Atlanta, you constantly right. hear it over the loudspeaker about mm. human trafficking. So it's not wow. only making sure that we are aware, we need mm-hmm. to be impactful. Yes, I agree. And I can it start at home? I remember when my girls were young and I always share with them, you know, you can't spend a night at everybody's house. I don't know what people doing in their house. I know what's going on in this house. And so you try to uh, educate your children and share with them, you know, don't let anyone touch you. Don't let anyone, you know, tell you that, you know, they're going to I mean, you have to teach the children, you know, you really have to teach our children. And even if we didn't give birth to the children, you still want to teach just children, you know, because they're they're innocent and people pray, like you said, on the children, you know? Yes. For me, um, as the narrator of my own story, I was, um, uh, it was two of my relatives and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't blame my parents because my no. parents were working parents. They believed mm-hmm. they put us in safe care. And instead of right. these relatives right. 
praying for us, opening up in prayer mm -hmm. and, you know, covering us with prayer. And I say yes. us, I am one to mm -hmm. speak out, but you know, I, I'm not the only one in my family. And so no. another family member, you know, is not ready to speak, but mm -hmm. understandably, um, instead of praying for us, they prayed on us, P-R-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And yeah. my parents were young parents when they got married. So, you yeah. know, back in the 60s, there were things that people didn't talk about. We didn't talk about good and bad touches. Like you said, oh, we, you can't spend the night over there, but we didn't know why. Or don't right. sit on that person's lap. And children, the language that they can utilize and, and mm -hmm. so, you know, when I was a owner of children's centers or the program director of on-campus mm -hmm. children's centers, and I had um, early childhood educators as interns, I always mm -hmm. made sure we were all clear that we were going to use proper terminology for genitalia because yeah. children need to know, you know, That's right. you, you, mm -hmm. you give it, you know, I've had experiences where Young okay. children have been given, um, you know, pseudo names for their genitalia. And, um, mm. you know, if something happens, you're not sure. It can be ambiguous. I had one little girl, her mom said she didn't want her to know the, the you know, the term vagina. Mm -hmm. So she called it elephant. And so <laughs> you know, one day she said her elephant was itching. And so, you know, I, I called another uh, adult. Mm always have two adults and That's so right. I said, you mm -hmm. know just to get a clear understanding i said do i have an elephant she said yes and i asked her if the other you know adult had an elephant a, you know female and right. what she was describing was for her vagina and so i'm thinking mm. you know when the teachers read elmer the elephant's coat of many colors what was oh, she yeah. you mm -hmm. know yes so when we shared wow. with the mother, I then I then got a backstory. The mm -hmm. the mother remarried, and mm -hmm. the person she remarried had a adolescent son, and mm -hmm. she the daughter and the stepson would often watch television in his room with the door closed. The mother never thought anything about, and mm -hmm. he would he told the four year old that he was touching. Mm -hmm her eye while he put his finger in her vagina. Oh so my he, Lord. He, he, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, it oh wow. Our eyes and not know it. That's right. You know, uh, and there's nothing new under the sun. If you read the Bible, you know, you go back to the Old Testament and even the, the New Testament is when incest was prevalent, you know, rape was prevalent. So this is nothing new. And so yes. we have to discuss it and, and let people be aware of it so that they can know how to protect their bodies, you know. Uh, and I'm so glad that I didn't even realize this new uh, April was the, the sexual awareness month, sexual assault awareness month, because we need to talk about it. Don't put it under the rug. It's not a taboo issue like men mental health, you know, used to be. Don't yeah. talk about it. But the more we talk about it, people are more aware of it children and adults, you know, because there needs to be delivered from, from those uh, trauma yes. experiences that they've had. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. So April, April 1st, as I stated with um, Michigan's Children's Trust Fund, we kicked it off. April 1st is where blue and awareness mm. of child abuse and neglect. So yes. we have blue pinwheels that um, we, <clears throat> excuse me, collaborated with many different corporations. And as you go around, you may see blue pinwheels and, and that is the awareness symbol. So yeah. um, I did, um, actually I have one here. My granddaughters and I put some together, mm -hmm. we made them. And so we yeah. did a posting on, it's coming oh. loose. We did a posting on April yes. 1st, we wore blue and I highlighted it. And I still have individuals who will say to me, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. And I said, well, it's a good thing you aren't me because <laughs> secrets keep you sick. And I no mm. longer want to be in a sick state because mm. I walked around with mm. <clears throat> a shame on my back that didn't mm. belong to me for many, many years. 
That's the right. shame belongs right. to the adults who violated me. And That's that right. I want to be in a space of healing. Mm. And, yes. and when I do the training and when I speak out, mm -hmm. you never know. Someone say, hey, I'm not alone. I don't have to feel, you know, this this overwhelming sense of depression. I don't have to feel like I'm alienated and that, you know, I have this horrific thing that has happened to me and hasn't happened to someone else. And there is healing. There mm -hmm. is healing. How I do my healing is through the training. And again, mm -hmm. platforms like this. Yes. It's not about me getting impacts on the back or anything. And even with my organization, I don't get an income from that because mm -hmm. I feel that that's an assignment from God. Once yeah. I have started that healing and he mm -hmm. puts that in my, as, as an assignment for me to speak up mm -hmm. and speak out, I'm there. Yes. You're no longer going to silence me. No mm -hmm. more. That's right. Because uh, this, the perpetrator, you know, I always tell you, I'm going to kill you or kill your family if you tell. So they try to put the guilt on the person who was victimized, you know. Yeah. And, and can, can we just even talk on a broader mm -hmm. sense? Um, when I remember when I was a teenager and it was a lady on our block, you know, back then everybody knew everybody, right, in the neighborhood. And she was saying that someone, a, a neighbor had really raped her. And then when she went to the, the, the police station, made her, they made her think that it was her fault. But what did you have on? Did you have something like <clears throat> short something? And so it, it's all of that same stigma, that same old, you know, you caused it to have, you you wanted it, you know. But her no should have meant no, shouldn't it? I mean, have we seen any change from that, you think, Crystal, or no? Um, I, I think more recently with the Me Too movement, mm -hmm that mm -hmm. more people are being more courageous and coming out and speaking up. Yes, yes. they're still victimizing the victim. I too mm -hmm. have had an incident like that where I mm -hmm. was out gardening early in the morning and you know how that sixth sense will come to mm -hmm. you. And yes. while I was out gardening, I this was like seven in the morning, I saw somebody out, you know, out of the my peripheral vision and uh -huh. I thought, you know, he doesn't look familiar as someone in the neighborhood. And about a half an hour later, I, you know, I'm, I'm putting plants, putting, you know, the plants into the ground. A half an hour later, somebody, the same person came and grabbed my buttocks. And I oh my screamed. And oh my this, this was back in the 90s because I was getting mm -hmm. divorced and I was living with my parents. And mm -hmm. um, my dad happened to be, I grew up in the Grand Mount Rosedale Park area in Detroit. And my dad happened oh, yeah. to be in the den, you know, a very large mm -hmm. home, large acreage yeah. in the front yard. But he happened to come mm -hmm. out, he heard me, he's like, Chris, what's going on? And I, you know, I'm, I'm telling him. And immediately, you know, we called the police. And when right. the police came out, I did get those questions. Well, what did you have mm -hmm. on? I said, I have on what I have on. I had on what I have on. So right. why does that matter? I didn't, you know, there was no invitation for this person to violate right. me. And then mm. I learned that there was a group home that had recently been established in our neighborhood and had not been, we had not been made aware of it. So yeah. the individual, I mean, it, it, you know, like I said, it was a large acreage coming across our lawn. So right. the person that, violated me this was obviously wasn't the first time because the way mm -hmm. he stepped up in a quiet motion and mm -hmm. then as i screamed he started he started taking off his clothes running down the street so he wouldn't be identified you know mm -hmm. so wow. <clears throat> excuse me it wasn't his yeah. first time yeah <clears throat> but in in the trainings that i conduct we mm -hmm. do five major objectives mm -hmm. and we do one is to make sure that we teach and you learn the facts okay. so that you know you understand again like you, you asked mm -hmm. me well what is it what does it mean how mm -hmm. you know how, how what are we defining and right. number two you minimize the opportunity to leave children or young people 
in a yeah. space with one person. Yes. You minimize mm -hmm. that. And, yes. you know, a person who has been, you know, um, who's dealt with licensing for early childhood programs, you know, mm -hmm. in the state of Michigan, we require two adults. Two ad okay. But many yes. times, especially mm -hmm. now with a shortage, where you will oh, see yeah. one. So I always mm -hmm. ask, please make sure there are two two adults, two adults. not mm -hmm. only for the children's safety but for the adults' safety absolutely yeah. and you do the background checks of the workers yeah. i mean is that a requirement right that uh, is a requirement mm -hmm. to have a yeah. background check so there's several background checks there's mm -hmm. a background check where you do a child and a, um, child and abuse and that's done through the department of human services then there is another background check where you do to see if the person has any um, any uh, records with the Michigan um, State Department of uh, Police. You know, if they uh, any driving under the influence or any of that. And then there is a fingerprinting. And so okay. now we're doing more where it's connecting through the 50 states. Because before okay. individuals were able to go from state to state and violate, right. and there's no record mm -hmm. following them. And you will still wow. get individuals who are required by law to list mm -hmm. themselves as a person who is under central registry as a mm -hmm. child abuser. And they will try to go from mm -hmm. place to place and not be listed and not, you know, mm -hmm. the names. But you can always go and check in your neighborhood online okay. to see mm -hmm. who are violators within your community. And you could do that through, um, oh my goodness, it's skipping my mind, but it's through the Michigan, I mean, I'm sorry, it's through um, the Department of Human Services within your, within your state. Okay, yeah, and that's so important. And I just sense that if people can really learn how to speak out and to talk about it, that will help a lot of, I think it could prevent a lot too, you know, yeah. uh, just you keep it silent, you know, it, oh, you know, you gotta, they think they got a good chance of having, you know, help keeping that secret, if you will, <laughs> but no. the secret has, mm -hmm. Yeah. I and know. you know, as I stated, it can impact you throughout your life. I, mm -hmm. I did not speak out about it until openly about it until, mm -hmm. like I said, six years ago. And wow. so from that time, I look back and mm -hmm. I am a survivor of domestic abuse. I'm a survivor yeah. of, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a survivor mm -hmm. of ovarian cancer, survivor of workplace bullying and harassment. And so I wow. look back on some of the relationships that I've had and mm -hmm. even one with a person who was, well, he still is a minister at one of the largest churches in Detroit. And he would say to me <clears throat> through the violation, well, you can tell nobody's going to believe you. And that triggered what mm -hmm. my aunt and uncle would say, well, you could tell nobody's going to believe you. Mm -hmm. wow. And if you tell, you know, I, I may do something to your family. So it mm -hmm. always in my mind made me feel as if I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. you know as wow. you know that you could do whatever to me and I would keep a secret until I learned you know the silence and listen have the same letters of the alphabet two vastly oh. different meanings yes be silent and I mm -hmm. know some people want to shut me up I get, I get relatives who say well, you know if that's our family business you should not be talking about that well, you decide how you want to handle what you want to handle. I'm going to do right. it because yeah. again, I want healing. Yes. Yes. And I'm glad you mentioned, we don't hear a lot about, we'll hear it in the schools, you know, and of course, government, uh, corporate environments, but the church environment is just as, uh, you have to be aware about even in the church, you know, because they're human beings. Everyone that's in there hasn't been uh, saved, healed, and delivered. So we have to just make, <laughs> so we just have to make sure wherever we are that we're being protected and, and, and to speak up if something happens, if you've been 
violated. Please speak up. Yeah. And so we just have to. So how can people reach out to you if they want to be, um, if they feel that they need to talk to someone? How can um, the audience reach out to you, Crystal? Do you mind sharing that information? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> you can find me on most social medias and the organization. Uh, the email is, <clears throat> excuse me, emerging, E-M-E-R-G-I-N-G-Y-L dot org emergingyoungleadership.org. And on there, you can sign up if you'd like to have us come out and speak. If you'd like to sign up for trainings, if you would like trainings that will offer you CEU or sketches. Um, I am also, as you mentioned, a state licensed trainer through Michigan Registry. So if you or your organization wants training and you want you know, credit, we can make sure that happens also. And um, through darkness to light, as I said, I I went through the two of them. So the third one is we talk about it, which we're doing here. We talk about it. It's no longer Mm -hmm. that taboo topic. And number four, you recognize signs. And when we recognize Mm -hmm. the signs, you, you know, um, if you have children who are normally talkative, or normally very active and they start pulling back, start being quiet. I wish some Mm -hmm. of my teachers would have asked me, you know, what was going on when I, when I was with withholding and not wanting to be engaged and things of that sort. And the fifth one is making sure we act responsibly. So if some, Mm -hmm. if a child or a young person or anyone, as you stated, the, the neighbor comes to you and shares with you and in a trusting manner, do Mm -hmm. not that person feel wow and reviolate them yes trust wow. their story yes yes and that's another issue people don't always believe the children's story you know well i just thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule but when you said something about recognize the sign can i just share this little short story with you uh, i was on the airplane uh, i was on the airplane I'm on the airplane. Uh, I'm on the. I'm on podcast. Excuse me. I'm on the airplane, and there was a couple behind us. It was the. And they had young children, so the wife, I guess, it was the wife or the mother, wanted to take the daughter to to the restroom, and the father, or the, he's no, I'll take her. I'll take her. I'll take her. So I'm hearing this little conversation kind of in the behind me. So he wind up taking the child, the little girl, to the restroom, you know, up in front, and it was just strange. They were there a long time. And my heart said, I just said, Lord, please, (laughs) I pray that nothing happens to that little child. She walked out, I was trying to look at her and, and even the, the, the stewardess, you know, the flight attendant was kind of, you know, I think she's not going to, is everything okay? And so she walked out, you know, looking at him, uh, but you know, my heart just goes out as I was preparing for this sexual, you know, assault awareness. I prayed, I said, I pray that the protect the little children. So, you know, you don't, you just don't know now. You just don't know, you Crystal. Don't, you don't. And, it, yeah. and I I speak of it, it's not mm-hmm. gender specific, you know. Right, it's right. more that I want to encourage men to become, you know, educators. Um, mm-hmm. We know that 80 some percent of the education field is women. or, or yeah. um, And so we need our children to be able to see that is mm-hmm. not gender specific, but there's still right. this taboo that, you know, men will do this. Well, I've mm-hmm. had the experience of a woman, you know, mm-hmm. violating me. So, yes. We, yes. yeah, keep your eyes open. If keep anything, open. you know, I, I've been at the airport when I've seen, you know, young girls with mm-hmm. no luggage, with older men. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Something's not mm-hmm. right about that. Right, right. Even wow. in an era of caution, speak mm-hmm. up. Speak up because yeah. we are our brother's keeper. Absolutely. Thank you. I've been well informed. I know our audience has been more informed because of your knowledge and your wisdom that you shared with mm-hmm. us today. And I appreciate you. And, you know, I love you, my sister. I tell you, she's Thanks. also an author, too, number one bestseller author. <laughs> And so until we meet again, thank you for the wisdom and um, we'll see you next time. And thank you for the.
hearing my story. Everyone take oh, care. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye-bye.